There are many different groups of numbers. Integers, rational numbers, and complex numbers are examples of the commonly known groups of numbers. However, not many people know about the Gaussian integers. The Gaussian integers are a group of numbers that have similar properties with the integers. A Gaussian integer times a Gaussian integer is also a Gaussian integer. There are Gaussian primes and much more. Those are just some of the similarities between Gaussian integers and integers. However, the form of Gaussian integers is much different than normal integers. Gaussian integers consist of all the complex numbers a plus bi, where a and b are integers. We call a the real part, and b is the imaginary part. The Gaussian integers are closed under addition, subtraction, and multiplication. This means that after doing any of these processes with two Gaussian integers, the end result is still a Gaussian integer. However, division does not always result in a Gaussian integer. We can see this with a simple example. Take two Gaussian integers, 1 plus 2i and 1 minus i. When we divide the two numbers, we have 1 plus 2i over 1 minus i. When we multiply by the conjugate of 1 minus i to get rid of the complex number in the denominator, we get 1 plus 2i times 1 plus i over 1 minus i times 1 plus i. When we multiply out, we get negative 1 plus 3i over 2. Because a and b are not integers, the complex number is not a Gaussian integer, it's only a complex number. Before we continue, we need to define some terminology. We define the conjugate of any complex number as a bar on top of the number. The conjugate of a number a plus bi is simply a minus bi. Additionally, any Gaussian integer that is a factor of 1 is called a unit. In the case of Gaussian integers, 1, negative 1, i, and negative i are units. In the case of integers, only 1 and negative 1 are units, because i and negative i don't exist in the integer world. We will need this information later in the future. Another useful term is the norm. It is defined as a squared plus b squared, and can be calculated by multiplying the specified Gaussian integer by its conjugate. Just like integers, Gaussian integers have a prime factorization, but in order to factorize Gaussian integers, we must figure out what a Gaussian prime is. Let's take a look at what we define to be primes in the integer world, as this may help us figure out what a Gaussian prime is. For example, take a look at the integer 3. It is a prime because there is no other way to factor it other than factoring with a unit, in this case 1 or negative 1. Because factoring out a unit is useless, 3 is prime. We can try to apply this similarly with Gaussian integers. Let's look at the prime 13. We cannot factor it in the integers, but we can factor it in the Gaussian integers. We see that we can factor as 2 plus 3i times 2 minus 3i, because 13 is the sum of squares. Now is 2 plus 3i or 2 minus 3i factorable? To do this, we need to take a look at the norm. It turns out that the norm is multiplicative meaning the norm of a Gaussian number times the norm of another number is equal to the norm of those two numbers multiplied first. Notice that the only numbers that make the norm 1 are units. This will be important in the future. Now because the norm is multiplicative, we can factor a Gaussian number by factoring its norm. With 2 plus 3i and 2 minus 3i, their norm is 13. Since the norm is prime, we can only factor the prime into 1 times 13. Obviously, the 13 part came from the norm of 2 plus 3i or 2 minus 3i. However, the 1 part clearly came from a unit. Because there is no other non-unit Gaussian integer that divides 2 plus 3i, we can conclude that 2 plus 3i is a Gaussian prime. Same with 2 minus 3i. To generalize this, all Gaussian integers whose norm is a prime are Gaussian primes. In other words, a Gaussian prime cannot be factored into more Gaussian integers except a unit in itself. It turns out that just like with integers, Gaussian integers have a unique prime factorization. However, the proof for that will probably be for another video. This video was definitely a different style of video than that of what I have done before. All of my newer videos will probably fall under this type of style, but it might take longer to make videos. Thanks for watching.